differences. Among all the letters from brothers and sisters, mine wishing you the best, may not be missing tomorrow. And I do it at the same time on behalf of your godchild, who can't do it very well himself yet. He always looks with great interest at Uncle Vincent's paintings, though in particular, the tree that hangs in blossom above our bed really fascinates him. And the remembrance, too, although I can't swear that it isn't the gold frame that attracts him. He's thriving, fortunately, and we're longing to show him to you. But there's still an art to being father and mother. Perhaps it's because I've had to learn and experience so many things within the same year. Because I've never heard other people talk about it like this. They have a child and everything is all right and happens of its own accord, but with me, it's not like that. What surprises me the most is that such a tiny baby already has an entire personality, in the face of which you're utterly powerless. He sometimes looks at me as if to say, what are you actually doing to me? And I know much more about things than you do. They're the eyes of a grown-up, and then with a great deal of expression, could he have the makings of a philosopher? He doesn't leave his mother much free time, but I did escape briefly for the opening of the Independence to see your paintings hanging. There was a bench just in front, and while Theo talked to all sorts of people, I spent a quarter of an hour enjoying the coolness and the freshness of the undergrowth. It's as if I'd been to that little spot before, and I know it well. I love it so much. It's like summer here, indescribably hot, and I think with the dread of the hot days still to come, it sounds a bit like sacrilege. With the first delicate, tender green on the trees now. But after all, I like the winter much better. I must make haste my letter because Theo was waiting for it. Best wishes, your loving Joe.